For the circuit in figure 6.21, it's required to determine the value of the voltage VVB that results in the transistor operating. So we want to find VVB, and it, it depends if we're in A, which is active mode, B at the edge of saturation, and C deep in saturation. So we're going to make a general equation and then we're going to plug in these different values for each part. So for simplicity, assume that VBE remains at a constant 0.7, that's good, and the transistor B is specified to be 50. And we have our circuit here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to find our VCE. Because later, and this is in the notes linked below the like button, on page approximately 103 we have a bunch of equations here. So if we were to look at this, we want to find our IC. And the reason we want to find our IC is because we are eventually going to need our VBE. And well, if we find our IC, we find our IB, we can find our VBE because that is the equations that we will be using. We've gone over this previously and it looks something like this. So in fact, if we were to take this, don't know if it's going to be the exact for this problem, but it's very similar on the page 103. So if we look at what we have here and possibly apply it to what we're dealing with, it might come in handy. But again, if it doesn't exactly line up, there are equations on page 103 you can look at. So continuing this, we want to find our IC, right? This is what we are looking at right here. So we're looking at this right here. We're going to take the voltage source minus the voltage at the endpoint, which is right here, which is our VCE, so VCC minus VCE, over the resistance it's over, that's one kilo ohm, it's going to give us five milliamps. Now we're going to do the same thing for our IB. And our IB, well, we're not going to do that exact we don't need to take VBB minus VBE and the over RRB because we actually have an equation for it, or IB right here. IB is equal to IC over the beta. We've just found our IC and we have our beta, so that's going to be 0.1 milliamps. Now, the required value of VBB can be found as follows. So, if we have the voltage right here that we want to find, the voltage of the base, or the voltage of our BB that results in the transistor operating, not the base emitter, because the base emitter is VBE, we are going to use the following formula, where we have our it equal to our IB times the RB. So that is going to be this values right here, IB and RB together. That's the voltage across here. And then to this, we are going to add the voltage of our base emitter. So this right here. So we add these two together and that's going to give us the V, B, B right here. So I don't know why I drew it down there, but our V, V, B is right here. We add these together and that's going to make it like that. Well, why is that specifically? It's because of what we just talked about a second ago. Remember how in this first one, this IC, we did the voltage towards minus the voltage at the end over the resistance, or basically doing the same thing here we're going to take our voltage at the source VBB and then we're going to subtract the voltage at the end which is our VBE -E, and we're going to just set this equal to the equivalent for the first part will be IC times our RC and that's going to give us um, like the VC right so we would set this equal to well what's in here would be a VB Right, so again, let's go over this. We have our source, which is VBB, minus our base, which is VBE, and this is going to be set equal to our IB times our, um, our IB times RB, which is going to be like VB. And if we rewrite this, we're going to get what we have down here, and that's going to give us 1.7 volts if we plug in our values for A. We're going to repeat the same process for B. We are just going to change our IC values. So IC is going to be um, 10 minus 0 0.3 over 1. That's how we would find that. So it's the same thing as we've done previously. Right here, we just take a 0 0.3 because VCE is 0 0.3 and we get 9.7 milliamps. And then we are going to same, do the same thing for IB. And then we do the same equation for VVB. And then we're going to do the same thing for our deep in saturation. We're just changing the values right there for our IC. And then we're gonna get these equations. 
So the first one is 9.7 milliamps, and that is at the, well, the first one is 1.7, and that's going to be for the active mode, 1.7 volts. Next, we have a 2.64 volts for the edge of saturation. Then we have a 9.8 milliamps, or not milliamps, we have a 10.5 volts to operate deep in saturation, which is, we, we can see it's getting greater every single time. So observe that once the transistor is in saturation, increasing VBB and thus IB results in negligible change in IC since our VC ESAT will change only slightly. Thus IC is said to saturate, which is the origin of the name saturation mode operation. So that's going to be it for this problem. We're basically making a general equation and then we're plugging in our values to see what we get.